But you have to believe that when you're sitting in a church service and you all of a sudden have a truth that becomes real to you and now you understand it, that that truth has the ability to set you free. I want to show you one place, and I, I probably only go one other place after this. Go to um, 1 Thessalonians real quickly. Paul's writing to a church here that's a believing church just like we are. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And uh, I want to show you that when you're sitting in church, there's actually some basic positions that you need to put yourself in, spiritually speaking. In other words, you should not be in church right now taking a nap. Now, I know you know you might have had a long night, you might be tired. You know, wind was whipping around last night, kept you up, whatever the deal is. But regardless of that, there is a spiritual position that we need to put ourselves in. And, you know, sleeping is not that position. Daydreaming is not that position. Right? Texting is not that position. Looking at your Facebook stuff on your phone while you're sitting not the position we're talking about. See, because there's a spiritual position God wants you to be in when you're hearing the word. Let me show you what I'm talking about. First Thessalonians chapter 2, this is New King James. And notice on verse 13. For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing. Because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. Well, we're all believers, most of us in this room, right? The word's supposed to be working effectively. Literally, the word effectively here is energeo. It means it's active. It's alive. How many here have ever done something that you know you shouldn't have done? And all of a sudden, after you did it, you knew, oh. Anyone here ever? Just five people? Okay. All the rest of you, man, we're going to have an awesome altar call today. Part of that's because the word is active in you. It's not just because of the Holy Spirit in you. He does convict us, you know, when we do something wrong. But part of it's because the Word is alive. The Word is active in you. And because the Word is alive in you, it literally, if you put that Word in you, it will deal with you when you've done something where you've walked out of what God said you should be doing. But that's really not what I want here. I want you to notice this Word. He says, for this reason we thank God without ceasing, because when you received, everyone say received. When you sit in church week after week, you have to be receiving the word. Now, I've been doing this for a pretty long time now, not just at our church here, but, you know, Pastor Barb and I were youth ministers before this back at uh, a Brother Joe's church. So we ministered, you know, it's not like, you know, we're new at it any longer. When we first started the church, we were pretty green and just fooled everybody. But now, now we understand some things, you know, we understand, you know, we've grown, all that kind of stuff. But here's the deal. I've done this for a long enough time that I could actually literally come out and point to people that I know that are resisting the word while I'm preaching. I could just point you out. You can tell. It's, it's, it's something that you can see in people that they, they're not receiving. It's a position. Everyone say position. <laughs> just because you're seated today. You know, I can teach this word. In fact, there's times I thought about it. It'd be a lot easier on me. Just get a chair and sit here and teach it, right? God doesn't care how you're teaching it. It's the word. But how you're receiving it is more, more important than anything. Yeah. How you're receiving it. And the re word receive is an interesting word. You know, I just like Greek words. But this word is interesting because it's the Greek word. It's, a, it's a, 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 a word that has actually two Greek words. It's called, the word is para lambano. And it literally means this. To bring something that has been far away from you, close to you, and take a hold of it. So in other words, while I'm teaching the word, the word's here, but your job is to bring it close to you. In other words, I'm hearing this, I'm going to bring it into my life, and I'm going to let this change how I live. Amen. Can I give you a couple examples real quick, and then I'm going to just go to one other place. How about when I'm teaching on marriage? You know, maybe you're here today and you say, you know what, Pastor, our marriage is suffering right now. It is just outright not good. We have a bad marriage. Now, how can you have a bad marriage if you're a believer? And you're sitting in church and the pastor says, open up with me to Ephesians chapter 5. So you don't even know that's about marriage, do you? So you're like, Ephesians chapter 5, why would you go there? 
And I open up to Ephesians chapter 5 and it says this. Husbands, uh-oh. <laughs> See, at that time, husbands, you have to keep your ears open and receive. Amen. Husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church. Now, come on, I see some of you guys out there looking at me like, I'll get to the ladies in a moment. <laughs> but here's the deal. You can sit in church, and I don't know how many times, we don't even have all of them out, but I've taught on marriage over the years in our church. And, you know, five years can go by. You know, you teach on it at different times. Ten years can go by. You teach on it at different times. And there are people sitting in the congregation that one day they just decide this. I don't want to be married anymore. But regardless of that I don't want to be married anymore, I'm going to use some other reasons why I don't want to be married anymore. And I'm going to get out of this marriage. But see, last time I looked, I mean, this is me, a Bible guy. The last time I looked... Last time I looked, the Bible says that what God brings together in joints, Amen. let no man put asunder. Amen. Amen. That, that's in the Bible. Now, I know there are folks here, you've gone through divorce, you're remarried and all of that. God loves you. He forgives you. It's not the unpardonable sin. But it's not the lifestyle of a believer. You should not be trying to get out of your marriage. If you put as much effort that you're putting in to try to get out and making it work, Amen. your whole marriage would turn around. Now, I understand it takes two people to do it, but don't let's just get lost in that. It takes two people. I've got to. No, it takes one person to actually believe God that I'm not going to leave this marriage and I'm going to work on it and I'm going to get it worked out. Just one person. But while you sit in here, me teach on that, it's up to you to receive it. Yeah. Ladies, in Ephesians chapter 5, the very last verse out of the Amplified Bible, it says, Honor your husbands, esteem them. Speak highly about them. Say great things about them. I mean, it goes on and on and on about all these adjectives of what you're to say about your husband. You're not supposed to do this. When he's not around, you're telling people he is such a jerk. I don't know how much longer I can take him. Those are just signs of divorce if you don't know. Saying those kind of things. Or publicly. I don't know how many times there are people publicly that I guess they feel like it's really something cool that they're doing, that they put down their mate in front of another person. Wow. James, James, real quickly. I'll continue on with that thought. James, just thought maybe you better go somewhere, save some of you. James chapter 1. And we'll close up. James chapter 1. Guys, listen. The Bible tells you how you're to treat your mate. I don't go around other people and talk about my wife behind her back or in front of her. Amen. It destroys marriages. Yeah. And, and the same is true just in relationships. If you go around and talk about people that you say you're friends with them or whatever, and you talk behind their back, it destroys relationships. So we have to come to a point as Christians where we say, I'm going to honor the word. And when I honor the word, that means I'm actually going to let it guide my lifestyle. It's going to be the thing that governs me, the word of God. Are you with me? Yeah. James chapter 1. Did you find it? Didn't really want to get into marriage, you know, but it's a great example. <laughs> Amen? Amen? I'm thinking I need to just say a couple more things about it. <laughs> See, God, there are folks sitting here today, and we'll teach on it. Actually, one of the things is we're going to teach on in this series is on marriage. Because, see, it's about why we believe what we believe. So I want to teach on marriage, why we believe. But I'm not going to tell you when that is. Maybe <laughs> shock weekend, you know. In other words, you don't know. It's like, oh, Jesus. Should have been praying about this and asked God when he was going to teach on it. So I, but he won't tell you. I asked him not to. So, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer in what Jesus said. And Jesus makes a statement to his disciples. And I will start that weekend probably with this scripture. In Matthew, Jesus, they come to Jesus and said, you know, hey man, Moses talked about divorce and Moses gave us some reasons why we can get a divorce. And Jesus said one little statement to him that everyone passes over. And I believe it's the number one reason for divorce in the world. Jesus said it's because of the hardness of your heart. When one person or the other gets a hard heart, it's over. 
And you can get a hard heart over how they've treated you. You can get a hard heart on, you know, man, they've, they've just not been treating me right. They don't treat the kids right. Blah, 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 blah. But if you get a hard heart according to Jesus, you're going to have a divorce. And if you keep your heart soft and say, you know what? God put us together. Amen. So this is the crazy thing with Hollywood and everything, you know, because we have people that they'll tell us this. I don't feel like this is my soulmate. Hey. Let me just give you some information. Hollywood is so screwed up, it's pitiful. Amen. Pitiful. And you're going to let them tell you there's a soulmate. There's a specific, it's, oh, I think I just, I, this guy, I saw him. I saw him at the airport and we looked at each other and I knew right then, we are soulmates. I married the wrong person. So now I'm going to make my husband look like a jerk as much as I can so I can get out of my marriage to marry my soulmate. Let me just tell you something. You're going to wake up someday, and he's going to stink just like your husband did. Amen. He's, going to, he's going to need a shower. He's going to need shave. He's going to have days that are bad. He's going to do everything just like your husband. And you're going to wake up one day and say, why did I do that? Because divorce is the most hurtful thing that anyone will ever go through. You will never find more hurt than what you will find in a divorce. Amen. And the afterwards effects are never worth it. It'd be better to work the marriage out than to go through what you're going to go through. Are y'all out there? No. So if you're here today and you're thinking, man, I was just thinking I was going to get a divorce. Think Thank twice you. about it and go to the Bible and see what Jesus said. Amen? I'm closing. James chapter 1, and this is it. Praise the Lord. James chapter 1, verse 21, and I'll close this up in the New King James translation. It says this. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. I'm not teaching on this part of it now. We've done it in the past, but I want this part. And receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Now in closing today, and we'll pick back up the next time we teach on this next weekend's Easter. So we won't be doing that next weekend, but listen closely. He says receive the implanted word. So our position is we are to be receiving the word, but there's an attitude in this one. He says, receive with meekness. The, the Greek says it this way, receive with humility the word. So I told you I was going to close. So let me, let me just talk to you about these, these facts in closing. When you sit in church, your position has to be, I'm going to receive. And your position has to be, or my attitude, I'm going to receive with humility. Now let me explain what that means and we'll be done. Receiving the word in humility means I don't know everything. I don't care if I've heard this before. I must need to hear it again. You know, sort of like marriage. I mean, I, I, honestly, I, it's the most series that I have of one, one thing that I've taught on the most, marriage. And you can sit in church and say today, how many times is that guy going to pop those kind of things in about marriage? How many times do we need to hear that? How many times do you think? A lot. Probably like over and over. Probably just tomorrow when you wake up, you'll need to hear it again. That's how crazy it is. You need to get, the Bible says you need to keep on hearing these things over and over again. But here's the key. Your attitude in receiving. You can sit there and say, I'm receiving. But here's the deal. What if you're receiving for your wife while you sit there? What if you're receiving while you're sitting in church today for that one person you know, they really need to hear this. I wish they were there. If they were in service today, they'd finally maybe change. They'd hear what Pastor Mike was saying. I think I'm going to mail it to him, but I'm not going to let him know where it came from. <laughs> you all have done that before, you know. You're sitting there receiving for another person, not yourself. But the Bible says, here's your attitude in your reception of the word. I'm going to receive the word with humility. And I, I, don't, I don't know everything. I'm not talking about just me. I, I don't know everything, but I'm talking about everyone sitting here today. When the pastor says, let's go to this chapter and we're going to read this verse. And you think, oh, I've heard that verse so many times. That's not humility. And that is not a position to receive. So we can say it this way. Most times when people have that attitude, they're just hearing some stuff. But when you sit in church and you think, you know what? I'm a married individual. I need to hear about marriage. Our marriage can get better. I want to hear what the word of God has to say. I'm not going to sit here with an attitude. I want to hear. I don't know everything about how to treat my wife properly. I want to hear more about that. 
I don't know that, I didn't know that the Bible actually tells me in Ephesians 5 that I'm supposed to speak highly of my husband. I'm actually supposed to say things. It literally says, praise him. And the Bible talks about, praise your husband. Can you imagine? You're like, listen, I don't even praise Jesus, let alone I'm going to start praising him. Forget it. <laughs> See, but what it's talking about is you're esteeming him. You're lifting him up. You're not saying negative things. You're not saying things that tear him down. You're saying positive things. See, but when you're in church and you hear that, you think, yeah, right. <laughs> the day I do that, Jesus must be coming back because I will never do that. That's it. That's, I just received the word with no meekness. <coughs> so no matter what the topic is, because you know right now we're in this mirror saying you all want me to get off, so I will. <laughs> How about if it's tidy? That's just bad, right? I mean, it's like, woo, don't talk about tithing in church. But what if I'm teaching on tithing and you've come to some spiritual grand place in your life where you don't even believe in it? Even though the Bible talks about it all these years before the law was given, tithing. Then the law was given, they had to tithe. Then Jesus came and he talked about tithing. Then Hebrews. Baby, pull the pages out. Because if it's listed in Hebrews, any truth in the Bible that goes from Old Covenant to New and is mentioned because of the, first, the law first mentioned, it's a, it's a whole thing about how you study your Bible and how you read your Bible. The law first mentioned is actually all the way back in Genesis with Abraham. And the Bible says he's the father of us all. And then it comes all the way into Hebrews. And the Bible teaches us in Hebrews that here on earth, you give men, you know, your offerings, but there, he's talking about tithing. He says there, the Lord receives it. But what if I come to church and I teach on tithing and you, because you've gotten so fantastic in your knowledge, have said, I don't want anything to do with it. I don't tithe. I'm led. I've done some teaching on how to get the lead out. <laughs> Because you know, it weighs you down. You don't do what you're supposed to do, right? Just kidding. Listen, there's no such thing as being led in your tithing. The only way that God will ever lead you in your tithing is to give more. He will never tell you to give less than what his word says. And I'm not saying that because I'm a preacher and I'm about to receive an offering. We already received our offering, so I'm not trying to get something right now off of you. I'm just trying to be truthful with you. That you've come to a point in your life where you start to actually make excuses why you don't do certain things that the Bible says that you need to do as a believer. But when the word is honored in our life, we will obey every part of the word that we can. We're not perfect, but we'll obey what we can and say, man, I'm going to do that in my life. Did you get anything out of this today? Amen. Let's just close our eyes just for a moment. You're not dismissed yet. In fact, there's a video that I want you to watch. It's really awesome. So stick with us just for a few minutes. And we'll watch this video and then we'll get, we'll get you dismissed. But before we do that, if you're here and say, Pastor, I personally don't know Jesus. If I died right now, I'm not sure that I'd go to heaven. Jesus said this. He said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. Jesus said, you cannot come to the Father unless you come through me. And if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I've never received Christ. I don't know him personally in my life. Or Pastor, I am a believer. I'm a Christian. Somehow, some way, I've gotten away from the Lord, and I would like to make a fresh commitment right here today to the Lord. Or lastly, before we close this service out today, if you're here and you say, Pastor, I'm good. I, I, I'm a Christian. I'm, I'm, I'm walking with the Lord, but I've never been filled with Holy Spirit power. And I'd like to be filled with Holy Spirit power right here, right now, in this service. I gave you three invitations. Christians are praying. So all of you get you know, just an attitude of prayer. And if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I need what you're talking about. I need Jesus. I need to make a fresh commitment in my life. Or, Pastor, I want to be filled with God's power. I'm looking across the room. I'm going to ask you to take a step of faith. And simply just the step of faith being just acknowledge I need help in one of those three areas today. Would you pray for me? So I'm looking across the room. If that's you right now, would you just slip your hand up? That's your step of faith. Just slip your hand up real high and say, Pastor, I need prayer. I need to be saved. I need to rededicate my life or I need to be filled with power. Just raise it real high right now. Leave it up just for a few minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. I appreciate you being bold. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anyone else? You say, Pastor, that's me. God's dealing with my heart and I know I need prayer in one of these areas you said. You say, Pastor, please pray with me. I need this today. 
Just go ahead and raise your hand. Join these others. I'm looking one more time. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to ask every person who raised their hand. You, you obviously need some help. You obviously are saying, you know, I, I need this today. I'm going to ask you to do it a little bit different today. I'm going to ask you to come meet me right here at the altar in a moment when church is dismissed. And I'll have our prayer room workers come down and they're going to put some materials in your hand, take some information from you, and we're going to pray with you. So if today you raised your hand, I'm going to ask you, don't walk out, don't leave. Everyone else will be leaving in a moment. You come and meet me right here. I want to shake your hand. And then I want to hook you up with our prayer, prayer room workers. So if you just raised your hand, they're going to uh, come up here and meet with you and pray with you further. And if you did not raise your hand and you should have, I encourage you to come down here and be part of that. Amen. You can all open up your eyes. Praise God. Before I uh, show you this video, I'll make a couple quick announcements and let you go. I wanted to go ahead and talk to you about this book here that I have in my hand. It's called How to Study the Bible or How to Study the Word. And I know not everybody here today is really interested in studying the Bible like I do. So, you know, you don't have to get a book like this. But this book is actually a book that they use at Rhema. Uh, and it's a great book on how to study the Word. So if you're here and you want to know more about that, we have it in our bookstore. And I encourage you to go out and check it out. And lastly, if you are not here Wednesday night and Thursday night for Reverend Keith Moore, I want to encourage you to go back and grab these in the bookstore. What a phenomenal word that he had for our church. Great, awesome teaching. Amen. If you were here, you know that. So I encourage you to check that out. And uh, a couple quick things they wanted me to tell you is, first of all, communion. We're not having communion this year on our Easter service. We're going to be doing it Wednesday night instead. So if you want to participate in our communion service this month, come out this Wednesday night, April 20th, and uh, be part of that. Our Easter service is going to be a little bit different this year. So we're going to do that on the Wednesday night before. So we encourage you to come out and be part of that. There's a new membership class coming up in May. If you'd like to be a member of this church, you can go out to either, uh, out in the foyer to either desk that are out there and information desk and sign up for our new membership class. And um, one other thing is there's a new area in our church ministry of helps that they're getting set up, and it's called the um, uh, Set Up and Tear Down Crew. So if you're here and you think, you know, I'd, I'd be interested in something like that, it's to help us when we're doing a special meeting or maybe even something outside of the church where we need some folks to help us set some things up or tear it down. We want you to be uh, a part of that. So if you have it on your heart to do that, we encourage you to sign up at the information desk for that. This is a video that I want to show you just real quick before you leave church today. It's a video that um, is about a basketball game that is coming up. And our church, every year, has done this for quite a long time. And it helps our youth ministry raise some money. And I want you to just seriously look at this video and see how important this game is. Check it out.
to scare the junk out of people. This thing's all about fear. I don't care what happens to the other team. As long as we win and come away with the W, hello, this is what it's all about. Hezekiah <laughs> 5, 6 through 11 says, Pastor Mike's team always wins. <laughs> out in the foyer on the way out to this game and if you buy them now you get them cheaper if you buy them later at the door it's going to be more expensive come out and support the youth ministry that's the main reason why we do this game every year and um, it's going to be at Malone University on May 6th so we encourage you to go out there and grab your tickets thank you so much for listening to me today coming out and hearing the word all of our workers can go ahead and get out if they need to and I want to encourage you Wednesday night we're going to be here receiving communion together as a church so we invite you to come out God bless you you can stand and we're going to sing just a little bit and then we'll be dismissed. Have a great, great day. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are